from the Sands Convention Center, Las Vegas, Nevada. Extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube. Covering AWS reInvent 2015. Now your host, John Furrier and Brian Grazley. Hey, welcome back everyone. You're watching Silicon Angles The Cube live here in Las Vegas at AWS Amazon Web Services reInvent 2015. I'm John Furrier with my co-host this segment, Brian Gracely, contributing analyst at wikibon.com. Our next guest is Rodrigo Flores, managing director at Accenture, former entrepreneur, he's been a CTO, he worked at Cisco, industry legend, one of the original cloud <laughs> uh, with us, um, with Brian, myself, Stu, and a handful of others. Back in uh, 2007, 2008, when the DevOps movement started. Right. Great to see you, thanks for joining us. Glad to be here, Fi finally made it. You know, as a technologist and uh, us guys who have seen the cycles of innovation, I got to ask you, are you pinching yourself right now? Are we in this moment of like, oh my God, this is now going to the whole nother level? Are we seeing AWS 2.0? Are we seeing the big whales running scared? I mean, a lot of interesting things are happening in the past 10 years. Yeah, so uh, we're seeing the enterprise go whole hog uh, on adoption of cloud. I mean, we, uh, the number of inquiries, migration requests. Uh, I was um, interesting reading a, a tweet from Lydia Leong where she said that most of her inquiries are about migrating existing workloads, not about the new workloads, which is interesting. And that's consistent with what we're seeing. People are saying, I'm shutting down a data center. Um, we don't, we want to go to a, a, a public cloud first. In fact, Accenture itself, which is a pretty, uh, uh, let's say, established company, an enterprise company, has now a public cloud first policy. You have to justify for something to go on a data center or a private cloud. Let's talk about Accenture. Accenture is a very professional company. I've noticed that they have a very high integrity. All the stuff that they've been involved in is bringing above board. They're very tight on the, they don't over amplify their, they don't hype up their stuff. But they've yes. been a trusted partner for the enterprise. But that kind of, that kind of mindset favors the slow. Okay, but the customers want to go faster. How does Accenture compete in a world where speed is value? What are you guys doing differently? What's the new mantra? You guys have data scientists on staff? You guys have DevOps dudes? Give us the update. Great, so uh, we cover the entire spectrum of cloud. We have a thousand data scientists in, on staff. A thousand data scientists staff. So why do people come to us? Scale and expertise, right? So it's fine, you, you, you have small companies that have great expertise. But for a large company, when they need to do things big and, and uh, really scale up, you need to be able to say, yeah, I'm going to put a couple hundred people who have data scientist expertise. Or what we have is hundreds of people certified with Amazon. We've trained 1,500 people on AWS. So, because th there's huge demand for cloud skills, huge demand for specifically AWS skills, and people want to, you know, the, and by people, clients want to know, do you have the people on staff? Can you put people who know RDS, SQS? Can they do IoT? We have a, a significant IoT practice. In fact, uh, there's a whole IoT pav pavilion here that's AWS, Intel, and Accenture. So we cover the entire spectrum. On DevOps, we have great DevOps practice, uh, and we partner with a bunch of the leaders, you know, some com companies like Docker, companies like uh, Pivotal, right? So we are going pretty fast for an established enterprise. We're probably going faster than almost all our existing competitors that either offer advisory, but then don't actually do the work, right? Or other competitors that you know, have data centers or their own clouds. One of the things that you, you want, might not know is Accenture is an asset light company. We don't own data centers. Yeah, let's talk about that. I mean, it's We've all seen lots of companies who go, I'm a large company, I'm involved with a lot of enterprises, I'm going to be a service provider, I'm going to build my own data centers, I'm going to build my own cloud. What's the approach you guys have taken with Accenture Cloud Platform? It's, it's building on top of what else is out there. That's right, so Accenture Cloud Platform is not a data center somewhere that we call cloud. It's the usage of Amazon and Azure and other cloud providers where we provide capacity to our clients and then management. So things like we get asked for like, are we using the, the right firewall rules? You know, are we filing the right expert compliance papers? Are we doing backups? So, you know, look, a lot of early cloud projects are what I call hipster-defined infrastructure, <laughs> right? And hipster-defined infrastructure is that you see them, they're wearing the hoodie, 
uh, and they assemble their own stacks, they open their accounts, and it's great. And then they matriculate with this cool project. And that project becomes really important. And at some moment, that project and another project and another project rise up to where senior management says, well, hold on a second, are we management managing this the right way? Do we have the right controls and budget? Can any developer just put, you know, provision petabytes? Yeah, that's an ops question. This is exactly what we're seeing. And I want you to drill on that because the dev equation solved, we're seeing developers very much happy. It's relatively happy. Not a lot of change going on there. The ops side is a huge change. That's right. IT operations is under massive reconstruction. Yes. Much more than developers. That's right. Comment on that, what's your take on that? And, well, what's, and what's the prescription for this? It's what we, it actually is it the challenge is to kind of create the new cloud operational model, right? Uh, if you're traditional, you had your ITIL style workflows where everything yeah. requires an approval and uh, there's a change control board meeting on Friday afternoons, is that workload going to wait there, right? I mean, we see that a lot where we go like, you probably want to remove approvals and go, but how do we stop people from over consuming? And so that balance between agility and control is the new balance that clients are asking us for help, yeah. right? And it shows up in governance and billing, not just in the DevOps part. Rodrigo, talk about this, the conversations you're involved in. What are the top conversations with customers that you're having? I mean, you have a purview now, you're at Accenture, again, high integrity company, great reputation, trusted advisor to many large companies. Are they all going to Amazon? Are they like looking at private cloud? I mean, you're, you're, you've got a broad view of the landscape now. Yeah. Share with us your, your perspective yes. on this. So we're, we're seeing a great migration to both Amazon and Azure, consistent with market share numbers. Yep, um, we are seeing kind of a generation, second generation private cloud being built. The first one was virtualization with a little self-service, but now what they're asking for is, I want to integrate that private cloud with my public cloud, I want one common operating model, one common control framework, and who's going to help me with that, right? And that is the challenge. Most interesting, I was with a bank last year here, where, you know, a bank is very conservative, right? And said, look, we've decided we're going public cloud, and we're concerned about security, but we're not concerned about security as a way of waving the big bloody red shirt security down the hall and say, security, security. No, we want to tell us what we need to do because for, we know we want to be on cloud. Yep. That's a sea change, right? That's a sea change in the enterprise. So you could say the migration has started, right? It's already underway. It's going to take a while because you know you have to, do, it's workload per workload, cloud, you know, process per process, yep. person per person. So Rodrigo and I have been talking some offline and talking about some of the experience he's had. One of the things, you know, Amazon's going to talk about you know, where their data centers are. They're, they're growing their data center footprint, which is great. People go, okay, I can deploy the cloud anywhere. We've been talking about what does that really mean? What does that mean to deploy in China? What does that mean to deploy in Brazil? What does that mean? You guys have not only sort of global presence, but you've got global insight. You understand tax rules. You understand you know, intellectual property. Talk about what that sort of you know, Accenture business insight means now when you apply that to the cloud. Sure. So, uh, what's great about the global cloud is that you can de de uh, deploy workloads wherever you need, right? But you, you will get a letter from Export Compliance saying, "We noticed you deploy some uh, Chef scripts in China. Um, did you file your Export Compliance papers?" And so <laughs> intellectual property in intellectual China. property China, right? Even though it's under control. Does that system. exist? Absolutely exists, you, <laughs> right? And you have to go through the Great Firewall of China, and so. And then all of a sudden you go, I'm you only mean, kidding by the way, but, I, but I'm not kidding. People don't know what that means. Right, so for if, every VM that you spin up, you have to file export control paper. And in Brazil, uh, by the way, um, it's 35% tax if you deploy from the US and charge from the US to Brazil. So those are examples where people go in with great promise, they, you know, very cool stuff, we're doing the DevOps, it's all scale out. And then somebody has to come in and say, okay, now we got to clean all this up yeah, yeah. and make it. Or you, know, you get blindsided by some sort of tax or, or liability. That's right. I mean, right. huge black hole there. That's right, you know, the day the feds show up at your place, you know, and say, we're arresting you because you know, you're taking yeah. secret IP. So what are you guys doing for customers? How do, you, how do you move a customer into a global environment under a cloud consumption model that's global? Um, couple of ways. We actually have export compliance systems, right, that we report to from our cloud. We have um, subsidiaries in Brazil so that we can, 
We don't have to contract from the US. So our global footprint allows for an, a large enterprise, a global enterprise, to contract with us across the globe, right? So we are compliant in every place, right? So things, when you're selling to, to the European governments or, or healthcare there, they want to know that the people doing the backups are European, right? They want to know their data is in Europe, right? So we are able to check all those boxes for them. And that makes it easy for them to go to cloud. Yeah. Now, as you guys are building the Accenture Cloud Platform, I mean, everybody loves the, the AWS platform. Swipe a credit card, click, 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 I'm doing things. Have you guys reached that point? I mean, you've got a ton of experience in terms of how to, we used to talk about this, how to productize services, how to productize IT services, how to productize and make them, have you made it as simple as you know, being a front-end platform for these underlying platforms? Is there, is there still friction? Is it, is it getting simplified? It's, uh, we made it better. So at Accenture, um, you can go to our internal portal, fill out a little form, you put your, your accounting code, and we open your Amazon account. You don't have to use your credit card. That means that you know, if the person leaves the company or they forget to pay the credit card or anything like that, your, your client's system won't shut down. Right, so we make it as easy to use AWS and other cloud resources as though you had a credit card. And so that's, you know, that's a meaningful piece of work, right, to make the as adoption as easy as a credit card inside an enterprise. So I got to ask you the, the industry question, you're a former entrepreneur, now you're Accenture. Take your Accenture hat off for a minute and put your industry hat on. Is DevOps now becoming obsolete now that we're seeing Internet of Things in the horizon? Because that's just a development environment. The ops are now devices. You're going to see programmatic firmware, device drivers, those days are going to be over. Is that still DevOps or is it device ops? Or dev devices? Or, I mean, we're seeing a whole new class of developers. Instrumented machines, fully instrumented uh, physical plants. Workflows right. in, affected by this. Huge scene change for business. Right, so we're going to see a new kind of ops needed for those things, right? So you're not now dealing with the device because the device is smart, but you're still going to have things like what do we do about change processes to the, to the management layer? What are we going to do about privacy and compliance? You know, um, what are we going to do about the fact that we may have contracted with somebody to charge them per heartbeat, right? Or per insight. And so, all of a sudden you go, and these new business models are going to require a management platform and an operations platform that's not dealing with the device anymore, but it's dealing with the, the whole thing, right? Can you guys hire enough people? I mean, this is the opportunity we're talking about. I mean, what you basically laid out is everyone's opportunity and challenge. There's so much growth, so much new things. Absolutely. It's, talent crunch is a big deal right now. That's right. So, we train a lot of people. I was just telling Brian that uh, sometimes I feel that Accenture is the world's largest postgraduate university. <laughs> in, term, in the number of academies for IoT, we have an academy for PaaS, we have an academy for cloud. Because what our clients want to know is that do your, peop do your people yeah. know, right? And they want it at scale. They don't want, do you have three smart guys and a dog? They want to know, even if they're really three smart guys and one really smart dog, they want to know, can you, do you have a thousand people? It's a constant learning environment. It's yeah. a constant learning environment. Well, I mean, go back to the old school, go back 30 years ago, you went to a couple training classes a year, you got certified, you did your job. Now it's like, you know, we were just at Big Data NYC at Hadoop World, right. and the stuff Merv from Gardner was saying, Merv Adrian was saying, the stuff that they were talking about last year, there's now a new skill you have to learn. So you learned it last year, and now it's over, you got to learn this new skill. For Major sure. emphasis on versatility. Major emphasis on versatility. And that's where we are a people you know, company. We're, not, we're asset light. We don't own the buildings, we rent them, we don't have data centers. It's all people, right? People, I know people say those things, but really here it's all people and knowledge, yeah. right? So I want to get you guys' takes. If, let's go, so if we believe that's going to be a problem, software could solve it. Brian, uh, what do you think about this? I mean, you, you're studying the numbers. Radio's got a perspective. I want to get, is soft, does software solve the problem? Automation, I, orchestration. I, I, software's the great enabler. Software, it, it's, it's the beauty of it is, uh, I, can, I can employ it as a resource anywhere, I, I, can, I can get it at low cost or no cost as a starting point, so I can go from you know, idea and, and, and you know, all the way to implementation, uh, but, but it, you know, it brings its own set of problems. It brings the problem of, do I have enough people? Can I train those people? How do I operate when I don't have these distinct things anymore? It's, 
you know, we talk all the time, what, what inning are we in for this game? But we're in the first inning of this sort of software is eating the world. It's a fantastic opportunity. I mean, it's yeah. huge. It's a long inning. It's going to be top a long of the first. They're going through the order many times. It's, it's, yeah. it's actually like baseball. It just <laughs> takes a long time. Yeah. Wait. <laughs> Real quick, we're going to kind of wrap this up. What's the blueprint for you know one of your customers goes look you know I've got a lot of process but I want to do things fast. What's the blueprint to go? Here's how you're going to drive something that becomes visible in your company that then builds that snowball that they want to keep doing things this new, faster, more innovative way. It it depends on the specific business problem that they have, right? So. Uh, we work with clients, for example, that are moving into brand new uh, business models online. And so there, uh, a DevOps model using Docker and microservices and all, the, all that goodness makes a lot of sense. It's a green field. But we also have a, a huge amount of SAP and Oracle that we do. We also are the largest Salesforce integrator, and that's all cloud. I don't know if you guys knew that, but Salesforce is a huge business for Accenture. And we do a lot, a lot of that business integration happens on Heroku. Yeah. So it's passed from the get-go. So we're going fast, as fast as our clients want. And they want pretty fast. Yeah. And what are you guys at Accenture talking about here at AWS? What's the big news, what's the big focus? Uh, the main news today is we, we just are releasing our new Accenture Cloud Platform. Um, we call it the Vegas release because you don't want to gamble with your cloud platforms. Um, that's a lame, bad joke. And so it's also we're talking about Accenture Insights Platform, which is our uh, as a model service for big data. So many clients want a big data project, but they don't want to spend a lot of time building the stack and reference architecture. So they want, we come to them and say, pick from this stuff, click, 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 there you go, you're ready to go with your Insights Platform, right? And then IoT. Rodrigo Flores, the Managing Director for Accenture's Cloud Platform, here inside the Cube, we're live in Las Vegas for Amazon reInvent, and tomorrow you're going to hear Andy Jassy's keynote from 9 to 10.30. We are going to be starting our live coverage at 10.30. We will not be broadcasting the keynotes. Amazon will refuse to let us restream their keynotes, so go to their web stream. We will not have it available. Programming note, the Cube will not be broadcasting the Amazon stream tomorrow. We'll be live with CUBE coverage at 10.30. We'll run replays all night, but go to the Amazon website for the live stream. Andy Jassy keynote, 9 to 10.30. We're calling it a wrap. Day one is over in the books. This is the CUBE, we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching.